Hi there folks, today I'm going to have a look at the retirement of the Office 365 connectors. It's a great opportunity to start using Power Automate and of course my channel is heavily dedicated to Power Automate and all the efficiencies and tips and tricks. So if you're wondering what are workflows as they're being referred to in Teams right now, they are Power Automate Cloud Flows and this is the Workflows tab within Teams. And what we have here is all the flows that are in what's called the playground or default environment that have been built using a Teams connector. And you'll see there's a filter at the top here that allows me to show either those flows that have been built to use Microsoft Teams or, in fact, all my flows. Now, if I jump over to Power Automate, which is make.powerautomate.com, I am in my default environment, which is called practice on my particular tenant. And it would be good practice to, to have an environment dedicated to your new workflows for webhooks for Teams. If I click on my flows, we can see exactly the same flows that we saw within Teams. So the post to Teams via webhook, which is a flow I built 10 minutes ago, is the flow that we see here over on workflows. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to demonstrate how to build a flow. We're going to go to create. We're going to start with an instant flow. And then if we scroll down, we should be able to find the Teams webhook request, which is a post request and only a post request. If I select that and create, we'll see we've got the beginnings of a flow. So if I click on that trigger, we can see that the moment the default behavior is that any user in my tenant can run this flow and trigger it from the HTTP endpoint that will get generated. The default behavior of the Office 365 connector, which is the reason why they're being discontinued, is that anyone can trigger that REST API. So for the purpose of the demo right now, I'm going to start with a status quo. I'm going to use the anyone can trigger this flow. And then I'll demonstrate later on how you can create an app registration and actually call that flow by creating a bearer token. And of course, to make this as realistic as possible, I'm also going to call this flow from a PowerShell script. So what I want to demonstrate today is being able to post into a channel. So I'm going to search for post channel and we can see we've got a post, a message in a chat or channel. And that's what we'll go with. I'm going to post as the flow bot. I'm going to post into a channel. And once that's selected, I can select my team, the webhook demo team, and my channel, of which there are two. I've got the general and the system alerts. We'll go with general. So at the moment, the team and the channel is fixed. I'm not actually going to be passing any properties into this webhook, but I'll further develop that as we go through the video. So in terms of a message, I'm going to say, hello world, we can save and test this and see how it works. So now that the flow is saved, if I jump across onto the trigger, we can see we have a URL. I can copy that to my clipboard. And if I bring up my PowerShell and I overwrite this placeholder here with the URL that's being created, all I'm going to do is, first of all, pass some parameters in the body, albeit I'm not going to process them in the first run. And by hitting this endpoint, it's going to trigger my flow, which will post a message into Teams. So if I bring up these screens side by side, and if I click play on my PowerShell, we can see that the PowerShell is completed and we have our hello world message in our general channel. If we jump back onto the details pane of our Power Automate flow, we can have a look at the history and we can see that 18 seconds ago, my flow ran and it succeeded. If I click on the history of that flow, something I'd like to just point out, when I click on the trigger, if we have a look at the outputs here, we can see we have a body and we have some parameters. Those are the parameters that I passed in the PowerShell script in the body, and they are accessible to us in our flow. So to make things easy, I'm actually gonna copy this sample body and then go back into edit. Now, when it comes to using this dynamic content, you've got a couple of options. I personally like to write expressions, but I understand that there'll be several people that are very new to Power Automate. So I'm going to introduce parse JSON. And what parse JSON does is it takes an array or an object as input. In this case, I'm going to insert the body, which is from our trigger. And then I'm going to use a sample payload to generate a schema. And if I paste in that sample object that I copied from the history and hit done, 
it generates a sample schema here based on those key values within that object. Now what that means is when I go to post a message in a chat or channel, rather than saying hello world, I can now write a little message with some dynamic content. We can use the name of the individual, confirm their age, so you are, and we can insert their age, and your favorite color is and again, we can choose the dynamic value for favorite color. So with this information now in our post message in a chat or channel, the dynamic content will come through as part of the body and it will populate in that message. But I would also like to demonstrate how we can make this team and the channel dynamic. So in order to achieve that, we need to jump back over onto Teams and if we go and get the link to the channel and copy that, this is going to contain some key information that we need to put into the PowerShell. So the other thing I want to do is I want to clear out this team. We'll insert a custom value. And before I mentioned that you can use parse JSON, I'm this time going to create an expression, go into FX, go into dynamic content, and I'm going to choose the body from the webhook. But I'm going to add in a question mark, brackets, single quotes, and team ID. So this will get the key that is called team ID from the body that we send via the PowerShell. Now, of course, that doesn't exist at the moment, but we're gonna update the PowerShell shortly. So I'll add that in. Same with the channel. I want to make that dynamic. I'm going to add in a custom value, again into FX and into dynamic content, and I'll choose body. And then with this, I'll insert another value and we'll call it the channel ID and hit add. So we'll save this flow, and if we bring up our original PowerShell, where I've got the various key values in my body, I'm now gonna add in a team ID, and I'll also add in a channel ID, and with that, I then need to extract both the team ID and the channel ID from the URL that I copied from Teams. Now I happen to have that in my clipboard. I'm going to paste this directly in right now and then I can extract the group ID that I've just highlighted here, which is the team ID, place that in here. And then the other thing is the channel ID, which is this part all the way up to the TACV2. So we can copy that and paste that in here. Finally, I just need to remove that pasted in URL and it looks like I might need to go and put some quotes around these strings too for both the team ID and the channel ID. So with that updated, both the team ID and the channel ID are now dynamic and they'll get picked up as a result of sending that data via the body to our flow. Now, if I put these things side by side again, I'll hit the play button, our PowerShell completes, and we can see over on the right hand side, hi, Damien Bird, you are 21 and your favorite color is blue. If I change my favorite color here to red, and I'll put in a more realistic age, albeit still not factually correct. I'll hit the play button, save it once more, and we can see we have that updated message over in Teams. Now, of course, I've got a system alerts channel here. And again, if I was to go and get the link to the channel, we can have a look and we can see the channel ID here all the way up to the TACV2. If I was to copy that, and then jump back onto my PowerShell. I can overwrite that ch channel ID. And if I hit play, rather than the message arriving in my general channel, it's now arriving in my system alerts channel. So we can see with one flow, we can influence both the team and the channel that we post to, based on the assumption, of course, that within our flow, the action here is based on user credentials, which is myself, so of course, I would need access to those teams and to those channels. Now, before I jump onto the app registration and demonstrate how to configure that, I thought it might be useful for those, again, that are new to Power Automate. They might try and build a flow and hit what's called DLP. And if I put on my hat as an, as an administrator, jump over onto the Power Platform Admin Center and go into policies, you can see we have something called data policies. It's data loss prevention. If I select that and edit my policy, this applies to all of the connectors across my environments. And you can have multiple DLP policies, so you might need to involve your IT or governance teams. Now, what I really wanted to highlight is that we have a couple of categories, depending on where these connectors are, are located. We also have a blocked. 
And if I do a search for that trigger when a team's webhook is received, you can see at the moment it's in the default. But if I was to select that and then block it, and then if we go ahead and update my policy, like so, when I jump back across into Power Automate, I'll hit the back button, and what we should see is, very shortly, that we get a message along the top here to say that my DLP policy has restricted the use of that webhook request received action. So it may well be possible that your particular environment doesn't allow that trigger, and therefore you need to go and speak to your administrator about DLP. And that's why at the beginning I mentioned it may well be worthwhile considering having a separate environment for these Power Automate Cloud flows. Now, because this isn't compliant, this flow is now disabled, and of course, I can't call it. So in order to make it accessible again, if I go and edit my policy, I can go into the Block tab, I can go and select that particular webhook, and I can move it back into Non Business and update my policy. And we can see that there's no longer a block on this flow, but I do need to go and turn it back on, and the flow is ready to start receiving those webhook requests. So finally, over on to Azure, I mentioned that I was gonna show how we can set up an app registration. So I've gone through the process of creating an app registration. That gives me a client ID along the top here, which you can copy to your clipboard like so. You then have certificates and secrets. And if I jump down, I have a secret that I generated earlier, and I need that in order to authenticate to post to this particular endpoint if I turn on the ability to restrict who can hit that endpoint. Now with that client ID set up, there's one last thing I need to do, and that's API permissions. I've used the Access Microsoft Flow as a signed in user permission. That's a user delegated permission for Power Automate. Once that's all set up, you're then ready to use your client ID in secret within your PowerShell. So back over onto my flow, back into edit. If I select my trigger, and rather than allowing anyone to post to this, if I change it to any user in my tenant and save that flow, the URL updates, so I need to take a copy of that, and all it's doing is removing the signature from the URL. If I jump back into PowerShell, I have a brand new PowerShell with my tenant ID, client ID, and client secret. Now this might not well be the best practice for storing your secret values, but for the purpose of the demo, this is what I've gone for. And you'll see that like before, I have a spot for the URL, which I'll populate. I have a placeholder for the name, the color, the age, channel, and group ID. And I'll actually just jump across and copy and paste that information from my other PowerShell, like so. But before I hit the play button, if I jump back onto the original PowerShell and hit the play, you'll see that it fails because we now have a restriction on the endpoint, we must be authenticated. Jumping back across onto the other PowerShell, if I hit the play button, we can see it completes. And again, we have a message posted into our system alerts channel. If I go back into the flow details page, I can have a look at that particular flow run. We can see within the webhook, if we go down to the body, those parameters that have been passed, the parse JSON, which was built around just those three key values. So it will pull out the age, the name, and the favorite color. But because I wrote those expressions by hand based on the team ID and the channel ID, when we go into the post message in a chat or a channel and look at the raw inputs, we can see the group ID, the channel ID, and of course the message which is sent as part of the body into our Teams channel. So this change has caught folk by surprise. I do love talking about Power Automate and showcasing how to create these automations. So if you've got a particular use case, maybe it's using the RSS feed or something along those lines where you used to use the Office 365 connectors, make sure you drop me a message in the chat below and I can look to do a video for you in the future. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.